game. Your life is nothing. No! Your life is everything. You serve all purpose. You serious? You should treat yourself now. This, this, this ain't baby. Love yourself. This episode really hit me hard. From the plethora of symbolism, to the astounding music Studio Bind selected at the perfect moments, to the heart-wrenching reality behind what our characters go through, this episode was a true masterclass that once again proves why I love this show. Quick disclaimer, as of now, I've already read volumes 1 to 20 of the light novels. I'll be giving my first impressions on this episode, while also delving into cut content that I thought was worth mentioning. But I won't be covering everything that I saw was cut, so if you're sensitive to this type of content, watch at your discretion. There'll be no spoilers in the video, however, I might throw in a bit of speculation but let's get right into it. As Rudius stomps his way through the hall, heading toward the first year classrooms, he had Linnea and Persena in tow. In the light novels, it was explained that Rudius, upon hearing that Norn shut herself in, drew quick conclusions due to his own past experiences of being bullied. He associated the term shut-in with his own trauma of locking himself away out of fear. But as he enters the first year class Norn was supposed to be attending, Rudius reveals his reason for being there, explaining that the missing girl in question is Norn. I thought it was interesting to see detailed character models of Norn's classmates, and we saw some of them in the last episode. However, as one started to speak up under his gaze, the puzzle pieces started to fall into place. The Tanuki girl simply told Norn that she wasn't like his brother. Furthermore, the teacher's point of view further highlighted a pattern of a comparison happening between Norn and Rudius. As others share similar stories, Rudius begins to grasp the situation. They were now at the dining hall, which at the current time of day was empty, but Rudius was pondering on things, frustrated that it ultimately all led back to him. Unsurprisingly, however, Linnea and Persena still continued their usual comedic routine, which was funny to see. However, in the anime, Rudius expressed concern about Norn becoming a shut-in, fearing that she might never leave at this rate, just like he did, and leaves the table feeling unsure. But in the light novels, he came to a more solid idea of what he should do than in the anime. He realized he was overthinking things, pointing out that Norn was only 10 years old, and she might just be sulking. He contemplates his role as a big brother, and decides to offer a more active support. That was how Linnea and Persena came up with their plan, calling out a covert operation in the light novels, which involved Ariel giving an impromptu speech during dinner time that drew the residents of the girls' dorm building to the dining hall. The main issue here was the self-defense squad, which consisted of Goliath and her other members, and they weren't going to be easily convinced. So Rudia still needed to come in secret, but as Sylphie came to update Rudius on the situation, she apologized for not being able to help, stating that Norn wouldn't listen to her when she stopped by her room before. This acts to the fact that Norn doesn't feel all that comfortable around Sylphie, as she mentioned previously that she didn't really remember her. Rudius heads up into the room, using the spell Earthlands that he used once with Aisha in the Sharon Kingdom to get himself up there. In the light novels, Rudius pointed out that the room smelled like animal funk. He didn't mind the smell that much, but thought that was probably because the beasts in question were also young women. Anyways, Linnea provided the cover, and Rudius was then transported through a laundry cart. In the light novels, Rudius recognized that the sheets, blankets, and shirts were all from Sylphie's bed. But as they arrive at their destination, interesting how the anime decided to do this, as it adds an extra layer to the whole situation, while also showing how Rudius is using his past experiences and comparing them in an introspection-like fashion in this world. It's like he is remembering and reflecting on his past mistakes through others. But as he enters her room, we see an unmoved Norn in the same position we saw her in last time. When he couldn't find the right words to say to Norn, Rudis reflected and thought that the position he was in with Norn at this moment was exactly where his brother was. But finally, the Norn POV has come. But before I go any further, I wanted to throw in another disclaimer. I won't be covering everything that was cut from Norn's perspective, as if I do, this video could get too long. What I will do instead is bring up some cut content that I thought needs to be said that stems directly from what Norn herself tells us here in the anime. So here it goes. Norn recalls her first encounter with Rudius, witnessing him pummel her beloved father, Paul, to the ground. Despite Paul's flaws, he always prioritized and loved her deeply. In the light novels, reflecting on the incidents years later, Norn acknowledges that Paul provoked the fight by mocking Rudius after his difficult journey. However, as a young child, all she saw was Rudius attacking her father, sparking her hatred towards him. Following this, Norn's displeasure at seeing Rudius return home drunk with a woman was preceded by her intense fear of him. She knew Rudius as a powerful magician deserving of respect, yet her image of him was tainted by the memory of him violently attacking her father. This fear was compounded by the realization that she was now living with him, a prospect that terrified her. As she felt isolated after Rudy's departure, Norn believed no one was on her side. Her remark about the cold symbolizes both the literal chill and her emotional state. In the light novels, Norn believed that Rudius would be nice to Aisha, but strict with her. He'd praise Aisha and tell Norn to try harder. Returning to the moment when Norn expressed her desire to live in the dorms, we get to see her surprise at Rudius's unexpectedly calm reaction. In the light novels, she feared 
feared Rudius might resort to violence. However, to her relief, Rudius didn't react angrily. She then realized he hadn't displayed anger towards her since her arrival, leading her to believe he was growing depression and anxiety. But in the light novels, learning about the dorms and their benefits was a very appealing idea to her. She was sure that Aisha would pass the exam, which meant that she wouldn't have to go to school. So if Norn moved to the dorm, she wouldn't have to see her or Rudius anymore. No one would compare her to anybody, and she could just be herself and live her own life. But little did Norn know that she wasn't completely free from her worries. As Norning a flurry of surprise and admiration, she felt overshadowed by her brother's reputation as the strongest student in the school. In the light novels, Norn highlighted Rudius's influential status at the university, despite the bulk of bizarre rumors. However, despite his abnormalities, Rudius had a surprisingly positive reputation, known for his fairness and protection of weaker students. His magical prowess set him apart from everyone in the university, and Norn's peers and teachers urged her to emulate him. However, the thought of becoming like the brother she feared and despised was abhorrent to her. Moreover, the real realization that she couldn't measure up to Rudius or Aisha frustrated her deeply. In addition to her struggles with adjusting to her studies, Norn faced the challenge of joining midway through the term, leaving her loss in lectures that assumed prior knowledge. Amidst this struggle, Marissa, a demon and her first ever roommate, emerged as a guiding figure, assisting with navigating through the university and patiently aiding in her studies. Nevertheless, Norn felt isolated, with everyone incessantly reminding her of her brother. Even Marissa was no exception to this. Incidents like the Panty incident only intensified her hate as she contrasted Rudy's foolish behavior with her father's earnest efforts to save her mother. Unable to comprehend Rudy's widespread respect, Norn found herself overwhelmed by a whirlwind of bitterness, sadness, self-pity, and anger, reaching a breaking point as her emotions boiled over. Norn grappled with conflicting feelings towards Rudius, followed by flashbacks of moments shared with her father. With these kinds of talks with Paul often occurring after Rudius and Paul reconciled, Paul's frequent reassurance that Rudius was going through a lot were initially incomprehensible to Norn. Only until recently she began to grasp the depth of his words, realizing she was going through a lot as well. During her travels north to Rudius, Norn experienced restless nights, fearing the ordeal of seeing Rudius and seeking solace from Ruiger, who always consoled her but also always praised Rudius' character. Ruiger told her that the next time they met, they should face each other. After all, Paul didn't run from their situation. Despite this, Norn struggled to confront Rudius, feeling utterly alone and unable to find support beyond the suggestions to reconcile with her brother or return to class. But as they both speak over each other, Rudius nervously offers sincere apologies, expressing his sadness at seeing Norn distressed because of him. Their relationship reaches a pivotal moment similar to the one between Paul and Rudius years ago. As Norn draws back the curtains, we get to see this awesome visual metaphor. In the light novels, it was not only in their appearance, but also in Rudius's nervous demeanor, reminiscent of Paul. But what stands out the most is their shared resolve to face their realities without fleeing. In the light novels, Norn notes how her father would have comforted her right now, and Rudyard would have patted her head. Head, but Rudius did not approach her. It was at that moment that she realized he couldn't approach her. He was too scared that she might reject him. In that moment, Norn's negative emotions begin to melt away, realizing Rudius' resemblance to her father makes him less intimidating. She knew he wouldn't harm her or her father again. She needed to forgive him, leading to a flood of tears and emotions. But after then, as she greets the two of them, however, Rudius believes that he didn't do anything for Norn, as he knew what it felt like to be looked down on and be a shut -in. but he still failed to say anything meaningful. Norn remained silent about her troubles, leaving Rudius in the dark about what was truly bothering her. Despite this, he believed she would overcome it. She had done something Rudius had been unable to do back then. She had managed to sort out her feelings and pull herself out of a hole he had spent an entire lifetime trapped in. Rudius wondered if he had possessed a fraction of her strength, perhaps his past life would have taken a different turn. Nevertheless, expressing his thoughts felt like a release, a weight lifted off his shoulders. But as Rudius and Sylphie head out to give their thanks to the people who helped them with this, Rudius leaves this whole thing with a closure, saying that if Nanahoshi ever gets to go home to their old world, he will ask her to give his brother a message. Thanks for trying to get through to me back then, and I'm sorry. And we are left off with the title of this episode, in which his dual meaning is much clearer now. This I'm episode relaxed. seriously hit me with her. I think they did an impeccable job conveying the emotions of the light novels. The best part seeing how both of them reflected through each other. However, as you have noticed, I mostly managed to talk about what was cut from Norn's perspective. And even then, there was a lot more that was missed by the anime. So to this effect, I hope you go and read volume 11 yourself. If anything, to simply read Norn's POV yourself. And who knows, maybe I'll make an in-depth video talking about Norn's character as a whole.
Thank you for watching. I'm not sure what else to add here other than my most heartfelt gratitude for the support I've been getting from y'all. However, if you do want to connect more with this community we have built, come join my Discord server. You can talk about pretty much anything you want there, but once again, I'm looking forward to reviewing the next episode of Mishoku Sundays. Look forward to it.